gonna love you like nobody's loved you Come rain or come shine High as a mountain and deep as a river Come rain or come shine I guess when you met me It was just one of those things But don't ever bet me Cause I'm gonna be true if you let me You're gonna love me like nobody's loved me Come rain or come shine Happy together, unhappy together And won't it be fine Days may be cloudy or sunny We're in or we're out of the money with you I'm always, I'm with you, rain or shine.
Amen. That is Doug and John and Zoe and Willie of the Willie Cerdillo Ensemble that has kept us so grounded and together for the past 18 months. So let's welcome them home. People of God, welcome home. I want this side to turn to this side and say, welcome home. Now I want this side to turn to this side and say, welcome home. And now I want you all to turn towards the back where those cameras are, where people are still joining us remotely and say, welcome home. We are so glad that you are here tonight and we are here to dwell in each other's good presence, to dwell in the presence of God, to listen, to be together, and to sing. And your first opportunity to do that is right now. I invite you to rise as you are able as we sing Welcome to the Mystery. remain standing as you are able and join voices together in prayer. Father, Mother, God, thank you for your presence during the hard and mean days, for then we have you to lean upon. Thank you for your presence during the bright and sunny days. For then we can share that which we have with those who have us. And thank you for your presence during the holy days. For then we are able to celebrate you and our families and our friends. For those who have no voice, we ask you to speak. For those who feel unworthy, we ask you to pour your love out in waterfalls of tenderness. For those who live in pain, we ask you to bathe them in the river of your healing. For those who are lonely, company. For those who are depressed, shower upon them the light of hope. Dear Creator, you, the borderless sea of substance, we ask you to give to all the world that which we need most. Peace. Amen. Please be seated. Welcome. Welcome to those with no church home, familiar friends of Old South Church, and you who have traveled far. Welcome to casual observers and to committed Christians. Welcome to believers, questioning believers, and outright disbelievers. Welcome to seekers after meaning, music, or retreat. Welcome to people of all ages, hues, abilities, origins, and social locations, no matter who you love or what kind of body you have. Welcome to you right here, home in the sanctuary, and those who are joining from your own homes. 
Welcome to an experience of music and reflection, of reading and listening, of scripture and song, of soul. We hope you find shelter in the spirit tonight and know God's good welcome because it is good to be with God home here again. Amen? I have a couple of announcements to get us started. And the first, these. These are old-fashioned yet still in style pew pads, so I invite you to pick one up if you find them. They are uh, black, so they're hard to find, but pick one of those up. If you are at home, you're invited to visit oldsouth.org slash jazz, and you can sign our virtual friendship pad. If you leave us enough information, like an email, we promise we will write you a love note, letting you know how glad we are that you joined us in worship tonight. The second announcement is a really important one. Tonight, we welcome Jessica Young Chang to our life together. You've already heard from Jess once tonight. Jess is our new seminarian. She is a third-year divinity candidate at Harvard Divinity School. As a BU alum, I will not hold that against her. And that uh, she comes to us to minister uh, as part of her ordination process, her preparation for ordination. Jess will be leading worship and taking part in all sorts of life here at Old South Church. So Jess, we are so glad you are part of the family. Welcome. Now, the second announcement is, or the third announcement is also an important one. We think that over the past 18 months, you have heard enough of the clergy. You have seen us in our living rooms and in our yards, in our kitchens. You have seen us up close and personal. So tonight and on Sunday, we celebrate the Christian life, celebrating coming home to church by hearing from some of you. And tonight, Anne Dickinson Meltz, who you'll see in just a moment, will be reflecting for us and sharing a bit about her own faith story. Anne is amazing. She is part of our membership committee. She will not let any of you that she doesn't know leave without introducing herself. We are wild about Anne, she's wild about Old South Church, and we're so glad she will be reflecting with us tonight. Now, COVID has disrupted our lives quite a bit, and obviously we have had to change a few things about our worship life to keep them safe and sound for now. But friends, here is how tonight is going to work. The band is going to play, people you are going to pray, God is going to show up and dwell among us. And we, we will respond to God's presence by rising in singing so that our prayers rise to heaven with our voices as God's song reverberates back to earth. And now is your chance to do just that and show God that you have shown up in just the way God has shown up for you. So rise as you are able as we sing our first song, What a Covenant. Nope, that's not the first song. We are one in the spirit. <laughs> Yeah. 
together we will walk hand in hand and together we'll spread the news that god is in our land and they'll know we are christians by our love by our love yes they'll know we are christians by our love we are one we are one in the spirit we are one in the lord we are one in the spirit we are one in the lord and we pray that our unity will one day be restored and they'll know we are christians by our love by our love and they'll know we are christians Hi, everyone. It's so good to be back tonight. Um, my name's Anne. Thanks for the introduction, Sean. That was so nice. Um, my, my fiance's name is Philip Deering. He couldn't be here tonight, but we're both members of Old South Church. We met here. Um, we started dating at an Old South retreat four years ago. Plug for the Old South retreat. It's in three weekends. <laughs> we're getting married next month. Um, and we're so grateful to be back in this place after 18 months. It is so good. And what an 18 months it has been. Uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, we were living in a small, rundown apartment in the South End with six roommates, four bedrooms, one dog, and a few too many rodents for our liking. <laughs> 18 months ago, we stocked up on toilet paper, we binge-watched Tiger Mama, desperately asked Alexandra Rowan for homemade masks, and dwelled in a flurry of Zoom call sound waves. Needless to say, we moved out after two months. Uh, in the months that followed, we moved to a place in Jamaica Plain with an office, and we got engaged, very exciting. Uh, we welcomed a pandemic puppy, uh, we downloaded TikTok, we watched YouTube videos about how to cut men's hair, uh, and we purchased two computer monitors. Ours is a story very similar to others. It's also a very privileged story. Through all of this, catastrophe after catastrophe rained down outside all the walls, it felt like. We watched in horror as George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and Ahmed Arbery were brutally and unjustly killed. We processed news story after news story about overcrowded hospitals, inequitable treatment as the impact of the virus felt disproportionately on lower income folks. We feared for the physical and mental health and well-being of those around us. We feared for our planet as fires raged in Australia and on the West Coast. The word unprecedented loomed around every corner. We saw the worst of humanity, people just getting it wrong again and again and again. There seemed to be no, no end to the bad. And we wondered, where was God in, in all of this? Meanwhile, um, we started watching these videos at night, which are super hard to find. They're on this like Apple TV app, it doesn't matter. But they, they walked us through every book of the Hebrew Bible. It's, it's um, well, they're both church-going people, you know. But neither of us had ever literally before gone through the Bible book by book, starting at the beginning. Sorry to all the ministers in the room. <laughs> I'm about to, like, mansplain the Hebrew Bible to you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Those videos were these, like, 10-minute SparkNote-style clips in which this enthusiastic voice spoke over like an evolved like whiteboard type picture story drew out kind of what was happening and over the course of a few months we started at genesis and moved through book by book numbers ruth ezra nehemiah song of songs esther lamentations you you get you get the gist and many of these stories were the close and warm and familiar ones that our faith had had been built on Noah's Ark, Ruth and Naomi, Moses and the burning bush, David and Goliath. 
but some were a bit fuzzier around the edges, felt a bit newer. Wait, so the people who left Egypt literally wandered in the wilderness for the rest of their lives? Didn't know. <laughs> They're called the wilderness generation. Who knew? Wait, there's like a lot of exile here. A lot. There's a lot of oppression here. Wait, was Ezekiel like on something when he had that epiphany in the sky? We don't know. It was a wild ride with ups and downs, potentially the likes of an HBO series. Perhaps you're all familiar. But something came into sharp focus as, as we were watching or, or reliving the heritage of our faith tradition, book by book, story by story. Something that situated the moment we were in, one of deep isolation and grief, of mind-boggling human failure and inequity. It situated this moment in the canon of these stories. This is what we learned. Our faith is a faith that has persevered through a lot of catastrophe, eons of catastrophe. Our faith is a faith that exists not in spite of suffering, but within it. It's a faith that calls us into suffering, to seek out to change and find hope in it, not to shy away from it, not to live in our walls, nor to wish for things to go back to normal, but rather to realize that our world and our moment has always been ridden with strife. In some ways, it took a pandemic for us to stop so, so that we couldn't stop looking that strife straight in the face. You see, my faith, historically, has been hyper-focused on the good. We love the good, we love love. The rainbow and the dove after the flood. Where you go, I will go. Your people will be my people. It was go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. It was the parting of the Red Sea. It was David defeating Goliath. It was the land of milk and honey. It was good. And we woke up to a more complete faith because before the rainbow, there was a, a, a flood <laughs> that covered the world. It was bad. Before Ruth and Naomi, there was deep grief and loss. Before liberation, there was oppression. Before David and Goliath, there was occupation. Before milk and honey, there was wilderness, like a lot, like I just said. <laughs> After the promised land came occupation and exile and discord. And to look at only the light and the good and the hope is only half the story. It's only a fraction of it. Because thousands of years of stories showed us that most of the time, things are pretty bad. Our faith is one that holds close to truths. That humanity fails time and time and time again. That we endure through catastrophe after catastrophe. And also, that there is good and reason to hope even when, and especially when, it feels futile. We dwell in both, and that's where the wisdom lies. So Phil and I were still figuring this out. I'm not a minister. How lucky are we to be getting married and to live in such comfort and love in a world that's hurting so much? And there aren't really easy answers. But we know that our faith is one that calls us both to rejoice and to grieve, to find hope and to fight for justice, to seek wisdom in the midst of chaos of unprecedented times. It takes great courage and stamina to do this. And we know that we can do that all of that best here in the community of Old South. It's good to be back. Thank you.
Will you pray with me? O God of the high heavens, O Christ of the deep earth, O Spirit of the flowing waters, O Trinity of love, come near, bend low. Enter the secret and sacred chambers of our hearts. Come close to us that we may come close to you. Hear our confession this night for things done, for words spoken, for thoughts thought that ought not to have been, for things not done, words not spoken, thoughts not even thought that ought to have been. For these we beg you, Christ, have mercy. Forgive us that we may freely forgive one another. Renew us so that where we have failed, we may begin anew. Be to us together and severally our vision and our wisdom. In the stillness of this sanctuary, we remember those who need your presence, the sick, the unemployed, the bereaved, the terrified, the persecuted, the homeless, the landless. We pray for prisoners and captives and all who suffer from oppression. We pray for leaders of nations that they may seek justice and peace. For parents and school children, for teachers and administrators in these tense, tricky, even terrifying season of back to school. For your church on earth, for all who minister in it, we pray. Remembering all who have died and all the faithful saints, grant to them in their present circumstances and to each of us when our turn comes, eternal life with you. This night we pray for those near and dear to us and known to us by name. John, Vicki, Barbara, Anna, Tom, David, Dorothy, Etta, and Margaret. And we pray for the repose of the soul of our brother John, that he may shine in heaven as he once shone on earth. In silence now, we each name before you those persons and circumstances that lay close upon our hearts this night. church, trusting that God hears our prayers and is swift to answer them in God's own way, let us each whisper our own Amen. Thank you. 
I grew up an Episcopalian. I went to church every Sunday. And every Sunday, year after year after year, Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, I suspect they're still doing it this way, the offering was preceded by a single line of scripture. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to God. These are Jesus' words, a teaching or admonition from his Sermon on the Mount. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify God in heaven. I love this sentence. First, it proclaims that you have light. You are light. So says Jesus, and so it is. Amen? Second, it proclaims that the light that you are has an effect on others. It spills out of you. It radiates out of you. You emit light. You exude light. Amen? Moreover, are you ready for this? By the light you radiate, others might be moved to glorify God. Imagine that. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify God in heaven. May your light be radiated, may God be glorified, and may this evening's offering be given and gratefully received. Stand as you are able, we will sing, what a covenant. from scripture. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void. And then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. There is a reason the Bible is so full of passages about light. Light from the sun, the S-U-N, and the S-O-N. Light from fiery pillars, light from sparks in people's eyes and the colors of the rainbow. Light that burns but does not hurt. Light from a million twinkling stars. Light in the Bible is more than just brightness. It's courage. It's hope. It's warmth, it's healing, it's mercy, it's guidance, it's home. And I don't know about you, I know about Anne, she just shared it. These days, we could all use some of that biblical strength light. 
even just enough to see the steps ahead of us for one day. So for now, we can't celebrate communion in a way that would be safe and healthy for all people of all ages. And hopefully, we will do that soon. But at creation, God gave us charge over the things that make this life rich and beautiful and good, earth and water, birds of the air and fish of the sea, and light. It's our charge, gifts that we are stewards of. So tonight, we are going to send some light to each other, to those watching at home, and to those in the world, and we will do it the way we know how to do it best at Old South Church, and we will do it with our voices. Zoe's going to teach us a song, and we need you to sing, and we need you to sing whether you are here or in some other place, so that this world will be so full of light and courage that all will know the home of God. Here are the words. I am sending you light to heal you, to hold you. I am sending you light to hold you in love. I am sending you light to heal you, to hold you. I am sending you light to hold you in love. I'll sing it for you and we'll sing together. I am sending you light to heal you, to hold you. I am sending you light to hold you in love. I am sending you light to heal you, to hold you. I am sending you light to hold you in love. I am sending you light to heal you, to hold you. I am sending you light to hold you in love. No matter where you go, no matter where you've been, you'll never walk alone. I feel you deep within. I am sending you light to heal you, to hold you. I am sending you light to hold you in love. I am sending you light to heal you, to hold you. I am sending you light to hold you in love. No matter what you feel or what you choose to show, I'm always there for you and I want you to know. I am sending you light to heal you to hold you, I am sending you light to hold you in love. I am sending you light to heal you, to hold you, I am sending you light to hold you in love. I walk the path with you. Go slow, dear one, don't hurry. I'll go just like you need to go. There is no need to worry. I am sending you light to heal you, to hold you. I am sending you light to hold you in love. I am sending you light to heal you, to hold you. I am sending. 
light for our footsteps, if even for tonight. So siblings in Christ, may you love God so very much that you love nothing else too much. And may you fear God just enough that you fear nothing else at all. Amen. <laughs> seminarian who you can greet is that way the world is that way and peace socially distant peace is all around you the peace of Christ be with you now give it away <laughs> 